Hello everyone, this is Yashwin from Exam Hub Web. Today, I'm going to be solving May June 2019, Paper 4, Variant 3 of 0620 Chemistry. Starting with question number 1, the names of 8 substances are given. Answer the following questions about these substances. Each substance may be used once, more than once, or not at all. State which substance is A. State which substance is the main consequent of the natural gas of natural gas. So natural gas mainly contains methane, which is answer of A. B a reactant in respiration, which is oxygen. C, the main constituent of oxide, which is aluminum oxide. D, a product of photosynthesis. Right, so photosynthesis gives out oxygen and glucose, of which oxygen is mentioned over here. E, a greenhouse gas. Right, so over here we have uh, methane as the only uh, greenhouse gas. And a macromolecular solid. So here we have silicon oxide. All right. Moving on to question number two. Sodium 23. Sodium 22 and sodium 24 are isotopes of sodium. 1. Describe how these sodium isotopes are the same and how they are different in terms of the total number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in each. Right, so they have the same number of protons and electrons as you can see by the atomic number, but they have different number of neutrons. Why do all three isotopes have an average overall have an overall charge of zero? Well, because the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal, which means all of them cancel out each other. Uh, and sodium has eleven protons. Sim similarly, it also has eleven electrons. So that is why all of the ch charges cancel each other. Three, why do all three isotopes have the same chemical properties? So since chemical properties depend on the number of electrons in outer shells, um, that is why they all have the same chemical properties because all of them have the same number of electrons in their outer shells. Four, why do sodium ions have a charge of plus one? So as we can see in the periodic table, sodium uh, comes under group one, which means it has one electron in its outer shell. And sodium loses that electron, that one electron from its outer shell. And so it gains a charge of plus one because there is one more proton than electrons. So it loses one electron. And
B. Carbon is an element which exists in different forms. One, name two forms of element carbon that have giant covalent structure. Right, so that is graphite and diamond the compounds. Those are the forms of carbon, not compounds because it only has carbon. So those are the two forms of carbon which have um, only carbon atoms and they have giant covalent structures. All right. Two, name the oxide of carbon that is a toxic gas. This is carbon monoxide since it binds onto the hemoglobin in ox the in the blood and causes toxic toxicity. Okay, moving on to question number three. This question is about phosphorus and compounds of phosphorus. A. Phosphorus has the formula P4. Some properties of P4 are shown. So we have the melting point, boiling point, electrical conductivity, and solubility in water. One, name the type of bonding that exists between the atoms in P4 molecule. Since P4 is uh, a molecule of non-metals, it is bonded by covalent bonding. Two, explain in terms of attractive forces between particles why P4 has a low melting point. So melting point describes uh, the higher the melting point would mean the higher or the stronger the forces between molecules and since p4 has a low melting point a relatively low melting point it would mean that it has weak forces of attraction its molecules have weak forces of attraction Right, part three, explain why phosphorus is a non-conductor of electricity. Well, because there are no free electrons to move around its structure and carry charge like there are in metal and molten or aqueous ionic compounds. B. Phosphorus, phosphorus P4 reacts with air to produce phosphorus oxide. 1. Write a chemical equation for this reaction. Okay. Phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus oxide. Alright, so as we can see here, we have 10 molecules of oxygen on the product side, so we're going to be equating it. The reactant side, and that's it. Two, what type of chemical reaction is this? So, this is a combustion reaction. C, phosphorus oxide is an acidic oxide, phosphorus oxide. Reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a salt containing the phosphate ion. What is the only other product? Write a chemical equation for the reaction between phosphorus oxide and aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we have phosphorus oxide reacting with sodium hydroxide forming water and the other product. We have water over here and now let's form the compound the name of the compound so we have the salt containing phosphate ion so the phosphate ion is going to be bonding with the sodium ion sodium ion let's form the name of the compound as we do so we write the names of the compounds of the or the ions in a compound and then we write their valencies sodium has a valency of one and then we cross them so this gives us three sodium atoms in the compound with only one phosph phosphate ion. So this also tells us um, that we need three sodium at three sodium ions plus one ions to neutralize one ion of phosphate. That is because it uh, only one phosphate ion has three 
negative charge, a charge of three negative. So to cancel out three negative, we need three positive charges. And since sodium only has one charge, we need three of those to cancel out one of this phosphate ion. Okay. So we're going to be, uh, since, all right, so we have completed the equation and now we're going to have to equate this. So we have four phosphorus atoms uh, on the reactant side. Let's equate it on the product side as well. So I'm going to be writing a four along with this um, compound. And now this gives us three fours are 12 sodium atoms. Let's equate it on the reactant side as well. Now, as you can see over here, we have um, 12 plus, this is 10, okay. So we have 22 oxygen atoms. Now we need to e equate this as well. So we have four fours are 16 atoms of oxygen over here. And we need six more. Yeah, we need six. We need six more oxygen atoms to complete this. So we can write a six over here. Now this equates our equation since we have um, all of the number of atoms of elements balance. D phosphine has the formula pH3. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in a molecule of phosphine. Show outer shells electron only. Okay. So hydrogen has only one electron in its outer shell and it's going to be sharing that one electron with the phosphorus atom. And in exchange, phosphorus is also going to be sharing one of its electrons with hydrogen. So each hydrogen shares one electron with the phosphorus atom. And phosphorus has five electrons in its outer shell. So three of them are shared and the rest remain by themselves. This gives phosphorus a total of eight electrons in its outer shell and two electrons for all of these to all of these hydrogen atoms as well. E phosphine has a similar chemical structure to ammonia. Ammonia reacts as a base when it reacts with sulfuric acid. One, what is meant by the term base? So base is a proton acceptor. Two, write a chemical equation for the reaction between ammonia and sulfuric acid. Okay, so we have ammonia reacting with sulfuric acid. So now we get ammonium sulfate along with water. So ammonium ion has a charge of plus one and sulfate ion has a charge of minus two. So when we cross this, we see that we need two ions of ammonium. We need two ammonium ions to cancel out the charge of one sulfate ion. This means the product has the following formula. I'm going to be writing it over here since the space over there is quite congested. SO4, NH4 out of the bracket two SO4. Question number four. Methanol is made industrially by reacting carbon, carbon monoxide with hydrogen. The gases react at a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and a, a pressure of 75 atmospheres. The forward reaction is exothermic. A. Suggest a source of hydrogen for this industrial process. So hydrogen over here can be obtained by methane. B. Complete the table using only the words increases, decreases, or no change. All right, so we have uh, all of these conditions, and we're supposed to be describing what effect they have on the rate of reaction. All right, so adding a catalyst and its effect on the rate of reverse reaction. So, catalyst would increase the rate of any reaction. Increasing the temperature effect on the equilibrium yield of methanol. Okay, so since the forward reaction is exothermic, 
uh, increasing the temperature would uh, reduce the rate of uh, reduce the amount of methanol formed because increasing the temperature would favor backward reaction which is endothermic so our product amount would be less so this decreases all right decreasing the pressure decreasing the pressure effect on the re rate of the reverse reaction all right so decreasing the pressure would reduce the number of collisions of any reaction so this would decrease rate of reaction effect on the equilibrium yield so once we decrease the pressure the number of collision of molecules would decrease on both sides which mean um, it would also affect the production of methanol by decreasing it so this also decreases C Methanol is a member of homologous series of alcohols. One state two general characteristics of a homologous series. Oh, they have the same general formula. And they have the same functional group. Okay. Two. Draw the structures of two different alcohols containing three carbon atoms. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. Name these two alcohols. Right, so that would be propanol. One, let's start with drawing propane. One all that is having the alcohol group on the first carbon, on the first carbon atom. The remaining would be hydrogen atoms. And the second one would be propane 2 all that is it would have the hard the alcohol group placed with the second carbon from the carbon chain of propanol. So this one over here is propanol. Propane one all and this is propane two all. Three. What term is used to describe compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula? Well, those are called structural isomers. D. Alcohols react with carboxylic acids to produce esters. 1. The structure of ester is shown. Names ester X. Okay. So this group always comes from the acid and this com group comes from the alcohol. And as we can see over here, this group only has one carbon atom, which means the, which means the acid must have been methanoic acid. And this one has, this group has two carbon atoms which means this has come from ethanol with two carbon atoms but um, contrary to drawing the structure of an ester as we can see in the ester we draw the acid group first and then we draw the alcohol group but uh, while writing their names we write the name of the alcohol first and then we write the name of the acid so this alcohol is ethanol so we're going to be starting with writing this name and then we'll proceed by writing the name of the acid which was methanoic acid so this is going to be ethyl methanoid give the name of the carboxylic acids and the alcohol that react together to produce ester x so we had the acid as methanol and the alcohol as Sorry, we had the acid as methanoic acid and alcohol as ethanol. Three, ester Y is different from ester X but also has the formula C3H6O2. Draw the structure of ester Y, show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. So 
for ester Y, what we can do is we can shift the position of the double bond to the second carbon atom or rather the uh, ester group could be uh, in place of the second carbon. So it have a methyl group and the ester group with the second carbon atom and then the rest of the structure. That's it. Okay, so we're done with all of the questions in this part as well. Continue to watch the rest of the videos.